In this video, we provide you with an introduction to logic gates and logic circuits. By using binary digits, you can build electric circuits to process data. Circuits are built using components that carry out Boolean true or false operations. Here's an example of a circuit that can add binary numbers together. Now this is more complex than the circuits you need to study at GCSE, but it illustrates their use. You will notice that the circuit is built using three types of components or Boolean operations. We sometimes call these gates or logic gates. There's a NOT gate. There's two examples of an AND gate. And there's an OR gate. Let's explore what happens to the signal entering and leaving each of these gates to better understand how they work. So first of all, the NOT gate. The NOT gate is very straightforward. We can either supply it with a NOT, so you can think of that as meaning no current is supplied, or a 1, which means an electrical current is being supplied. The NOT gate simply reverses the input. So if a 0 is input, a 1 is output. If a 1 is input, a 0 is output. The second gate is an AND gate. Now this gate takes two inputs. Like the name of the gate suggests, both of these inputs need to be on, they need to have an electrical current, they need to have their inputs at 1, for the output to be 1. So if both inputs are zero, the output is zero. If only one input is a one, so only one input has electrical current, the output is still zero. Same if we swap the two inputs. It's only when both inputs receive a current, so they both have a one, that the output is also one. The final gate is an OR gate. Again, as the name suggests, we have two inputs, but either of the inputs can be on for the output to be on. They don't both have to be on. It's one or the other. So in this situation where both inputs are zero, the output is zero. Now we have at least one input as a one, the output is one. The same if we switch them around. And indeed the same if they're both on. Finally, we have the XOR gate, which is known as the exclusive OR gate. Now, this is similar in many ways to the OR gate, so you need to make sure you don't get confused in the exam. Just like a normal OR gate, if both inputs are zero, the output is zero. If one input is one or true, then the output is one or true. Likewise, if we flip those inputs, so the first input is 0 and the second is 1, then the output is 1. But here is where it differs from an OR gate. If both inputs are 1, then the output is 0. With an OR gate, this would still be a 1. So this is the difference you need to be able to spot and be aware of. We have seen that we can combine these various logic gates to create logic diagrams. And this is something we're going to cover in more detail in another video later in this series. Now, we've been writing the words AND or NOT inside the logic gate symbols, but they're not going to do that for you in the exam. So the first time you get introduced to these, it can be a bit tricky remembering which gate is which. So we're going to show you a simple trick. There are many others out there for helping to remember which gates are OR, AND and NOT. So this is an OR gate. And one way to think of it is that the back of the OR gate, the curve, forms the right hand side of the letter O for the word OR. This one is an exclusive OR gate or XOR gate. 
If you can remember that the curved back forms the letter O, then think of the extra curved second line on an OR gate crossing through the middle of the OR to get an XOR gate. This one is an AND gate. And you can think of it as being the letter D of the word AND, a capital letter D. And finally, this one is a NOT gate. And you can think of the start of that gate as being the letter T. It's the only gate that could possibly be the letter T because the other two take two inputs. So that's everything you need to know for the GCSE exam done. You can stop taking notes now. But if you wish to know a little bit more about some of the other logic gates that are available and that you'll learn at A level, then you can carry on watching the rest of this video. So on the screen are the four OR gates that you need to know about for GCSE and or not an exclusive OR, but there are many more gates than this. And indeed, if you progress to the A level, you'll start to learn about some of them. The two most common gates you start to learn about beyond GCSE are shown here. The first on the left is a NAND gate. That's a NOT AND gate. It's effectively the same as putting an AND gate directly followed by a NOT gate together. Whatever the out output of the AND gate would be, it then gets reversed and flipped at the very end. In a similar way, we have a NOR gate or a NOT OR gate. Again, this is just the same as putting an OR gate together with a NOT gate directly after it. Whatever the normal output from an OR gate would be, it gets flipped just before it leaves a NOR gate.